Welcome to today's Thy Kingdom Come talk. Hebrews 13 verse 2 reads, Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. When we think of hospitality, we usually think in terms of having friends around for a meal or for hosting a church function. There's nothing at all wrong with that, but it is not what the Bible is talking about when it mentions hospitality. Hospitality in the early days was essential in the absence of things like travel lodges and hotels. So no wonder the early Christ Christians were urged to be hospitable. Some of us pride ourselves on being hospitable when in fact they're simply being sociable. The test of how hospitable we are is how we welcome into our homes and friendship circles those who are visitors or strangers or newcomers. A church may proclaim how friendly it is, but it may only be saying the members cheerfully get along with each other. The deeper question is, how easy is it for a newcomer to join such a sociable circle? Hospitality is not to be seen as a grudging duty. Some may find it easier than others, but all should make an attempt. We don't need a home of our own, we just need a welcoming heart, a desire to help a visitor belong, to help a stranger become a friend. But what is a stranger? Is it a new person to our church, a visitor, a neighbour, a resident alien, a refugee, a foreigner, an asylum seeker? The Bible is unequivocal, unequivocal about how we should treat strangers. Deuteronomy gives a number of specific provisions for dealing with strangers. Setting aside funds and providing for widows and orphans is clear. The Israelites were strangers in Egypt and Babylon and understood how difficult life as a stranger could be. Jesus continues this. Matthew 25. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these of my brothers, you did it to me. As Matthew 25 makes clear, the Christians should see everyone as Christ in the flesh. Scholars argue that in the New Testament, stranger and neighbour are in fact synonymous. So the golden rule, love your neighbour as yourself, refers not just to people whom you know, your neighbours in a conventional sense, but also to people who you do not know. But we're all good people, aren't we? We follow Jesus. We go to church every Sunday and attend the occasional prayer meeting. We donate to food banks. We know the Holocaust was evil and we are concerned for the situation in the Ukraine. But how do we really feel about the many who make that perilous journey across the channel? Our country is too full. They're breaking the law. We can't afford our own poor without bringing, without bringing in more. The NHS is on its knees. We can't support these people. Send them back to their own country. Send them to Rwanda. This really doesn't affect me. But then what would Jesus do? Where would Jesus be? In Romans, Paul says, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Isaiah said, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. We pray thy kingdom come. And when Christ returns, we can be sure that he is unlikely to be up here on our hill in our nice, comfortable church with our fabulous resources. Jesus will be with the homeless in our town centre. He will be with the asylum seekers living in Lakeside. He will be with the people who are struggling to manage their mental health. He will be with all those people who we pray for, but are thankful we don't have to mix with. If this is where Jesus is, then this is where we should be. Father in heaven, you weep for those people on the edge of society, those people who we give a wide berth to. We ask that you break our hearts for these people too. Help us to stop, to care, 
to help to be like Jesus in our attitude. Lord, we love to worship you with music and prayer on Sundays in our church, but speak to our hearts. Let our actions be our worship on all those other days, Lord. Amen.